we're live okay hey i'm john proudfoot and this is the superhero podcast on the real meal revolution facebook page youtube channel and everywhere else i have janine honeyman client of real meal revolution and our latest success story welcome janine thank you <laughs> so let's start from the beginning okay we, we're going to get to the results later i want to hear the the path so you were telling me earlier that you had children and then over sort of 22 years congratulations for surviving 22 years of parenthood your weight just uh, escalated over that time what what happened yeah um i think it just yeah every year I just seemed to put on like two or three kilos and you think oh, two or three kilos is fine but the following year you put on two or three kilos again eventually it just adds up so when i think about 2014 i tried banting and it really worked well and i lost a lot of weight but then you get complacent and that sugar just crept back in and it just all came back <laughs> until that, lockdown and so <laughs> yeah, until lockdown. So what, like early twenty twenty? But but up until yeah. so you put on weight in you put on weight in the first few years, and then what happened? And then there was some health issues that crept in. Tell us about some of the the health issues. Yeah, I was diagnosed. I was having a lot of back pain, and I was diagnosed. My physio eventually said to me, "Listen, I think you need to go and see somebody." And I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and I just thought, no. I don't believe that and then I did some googling and I was like actually that is those are my symptoms so then I was put on medication for that which I eventually took myself off because it just made me so thirsty and sleepy and I actually couldn't take couldn't take it so I just stopped taking that and decided I just live with the backache and but when I started the banting um yeah the, I actually within like about six weeks the backache sort of eased up um and my chiropractor was like what's going on so then no, i've been doing banting and he was quite surprised and he actually said to me last year in about february i was seeing him like once a week he said remember that diet you did maybe you should try that again and yeah i haven't seen my chiropractor or physio since i've been on keto now so all of it's so gone. you fired no. them <laughs> yeah i fired them <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's amazing, and and so I'm trying to remember. You also said that uh, you were on some diff some all kinds of medication. Um, I think might might have been beyond pain medication. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. I the last for well, 2019 and 2020, I ended up with one bladder infection after the other, and last year in august we were on holiday and i ended up in hospital in george on our last day on holiday having kidney stones removed because i was i think on about day 20 of an antibiotic for bladder infection and the doctor there said no i don't think this is a bladder infection anymore i think you've got kidney stones so he sent me to george for an ultrasound and the lady there said to me you do know you're not going home i said no no we're packing up and we leave and we're going to honestan tomorrow and she went no you're not <laughs> So I spent my last night in the George Hospital having an operation. Spent two days in Arniston and then I was back in hospital in Cape Town because there was a blockage and had to have a stent put in and then had to have another operation to take it out. And in the middle of all of that, I ended up with signing up with a coach and a dietitian on, on Real Meal. And I no longer take any medication for kidneys or bladder or anything. They've all gone. So that's quite a bold move. You, you've got this kidney issue and, um, and you know, probably family and whatever telling, you know, when everyone wants to give you their free advice and your decision is, okay, I'm going to go banting and I'm going to um, get a coach. Like what was, what made you actually take action? What made you decide to do, uh, make, take nutritional action rather than like get more meds? And, and then what made you choose to choose real meal? um when i did banting the first time i noticed a huge improvement in my health i felt better my um fibromyalgia seemed to clear up so i just thought you know what? if if i could sort that out then then why not sort my kidneys out this must actually be i must be able to fix this as well with with diet and a lot of people go oh but if you've got kidney problems or kidney stones you're eating too much protein 
So I thought, you know what, I'm signing up with a coach because then I get access to a dietitian and then I've actually got the backing of healthcare professionals telling me what I can and what I can't eat and then at least, yeah, I've got the backing and I know that I'm doing the right thing and I know the nutrition is going to work for me, but at least this way I can go, oh, I've got a dietitian helping me. And everybody, yeah, just trusts you more that way. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess it kind of puts your own mind at ease a bit too, hey? Yeah, it does. Although I'd been watching and researching and realized that the whole protein thing wasn't a problem, but at least having the backing gave me that to tell other people, no, it's not protein. It's actually just, you know, it's actually sugar. So Yeah. So yeah. you're saying it's not, it wasn't, for you, it doesn't seem like it's the excess of protein or, or at least like, I think that when people see banting, they think, oh, you've got to eat all this protein and all this fat. Yeah. But what they don't talk about is what you remove, which is like all. Yeah, exactly. Did you get me? I think I cut out um, for a second. I think you cut out there. <laughs> oh, no. Well, no, I was saying when, when people sign up for banting, uh, when people talk about it, they see it as this like, you, you know, you have to eat all this protein and, and all this mm -hmm. fat. And like, I can't, I, I always have to tell people, it's not about what you're adding in because that's less important to a degree. What's more important is actually what you take away and what you yeah. take away is like junk and processed food. So, mm -hmm. so what were, what were some of the foods you were eating at the time that you had to cut out to get this improvement? Um, I'm definitely addicted to sugar. So yeah, lots of chocolate had sneaked back in. Um, I don't do grains or anything like that. They just affect my gut immediately. So I don't I don't have a problem with you can put a whole chocolate cake in front of me, I'm not gonna touch it because I'm gonna be in pain mm. within seconds. So I can sit there. But it's more the chocolates, drinking hot chocolate, the liqueurs after supper. Um yeah, those things are just snuck back in and, and that was basically the problem. So it was just having and then during lockdown we were having lots of rice and gin and tonics and you know, you just don't realize how much sugar you're actually having and the chips at the brise and things like that. You you don't actually realize how much you're actually consuming until you take it away and you go, sure, I was eating a lot of chips. I was drinking a lot of tonic. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And, well, and so let's talk about that. How did you get from – so you signed up and you obviously, like, got in touch with your coach and you got some guidance from – real meal what was the process you followed regular can i say crap to getting to like having a, a clean diet um because i've done banting before i kind of knew what the food was about but once i started tracking it um i realized i was still having a lot more carbs and i realized you know you have your sweet potato or you have some butternut and so my carbs were still very high even though i thought i knew what i was doing so I just decided then that I was going green veg or salads and a protein at each meal. And that's kind of what I stuck to in the beginning. And yeah, just added a bit of butter here or some coconut oil, um, a bit of cheese just to you know make it more interesting. And that's kind of what I stuck to in the beginning. And then I added the intermittent fasting as, as we went along. But that okay. was my was in the beginning yeah and then also so you a lot of people think it's very boring you know to just like not have any carbs or sugar mm. what, what did you do to keep it interesting or was it interesting you know like how did you find the change in food um with the vegetables and that i just do roast veg so i'm quite happy to have roast veg um and i put a lot of olive oil on it so it's quite juicy or i add coconut cream to it with some cheese um if we go out and I don't want to, um, I'm trying to make my drinks interesting, then I add berries or fruit to the water and we call it pretty water. So you've got some blueberries and blackberries floating in your water. So it just, it just makes the drink look more interesting. Um, so that has been helpful. Um, at Bryce, I make sure there's some cucumber or crudités with a yogurt dress a dip or something. So that instead of those chips, you you're nibbling on something something else, and it's amazing how many people actually gravitate to that plate and not the chips in the end. So yeah, yeah. And so, did you have anyone else at home on the journey with you, or are you an island banting on your own? Um, 
in the beginning um my oldest son's actually been on and off banting most of his teenage life so he's he yeah he he tries to stick to it most of the time but being 22 you still go out for your beers and things like that but he he's quite good he'll he'll have a decent breakfast and then he'll probably eat again maybe later so he kind of does a two meal a day thing um mm -hmm. my younger son goes through stages where he joins me and then he doesn't <laughs> and my husband is, he eats carbs all day <laughs> He just he does not do this. He, he calls my groups a cult and he's not interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must say, like, of all the clients to speak to, like, the biggest um, complaint you get is, like, um, there are two. The one is, like, my husband's not interested at all or my husband's doing it and he's losing weight twice yeah. as fast as I am. And, like, yeah, it's... I, I think I think men just genetically lose weight faster. It's not unique to banting. I think it's like yeah. in general any diet. So right. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> and and so you mentioned you mentioned the support group uh, that your husband says is a cult, but you also had a had a coach. What was so you you sign up with a coach and then at some point you joined joined the support group, which is the Hero program. What mm. what was the difference between the two? Um. I think with, with a group, you've got a WhatsApp group, so you you connected almost like, um, almost like becomes like a little family unit in the end, and you do a daily check in. So if if say I'm decide I've decided I'm fasting this week, then every day I send a picture of my Zero app, which is the fasting app, and I send a picture saying I kept on an 18 hour fast or a 20 hour fast or whatever it was. And in my first group, we had a lady on there, uh, Margie, who was like doing OMAD. And I was like, what on earth is OMAD? I had to Google it. And it's one day, one meal a day. And then I was like, how on earth can she do that? And eventually, by the end of that first heroes group, we were all we had all done an OMAD at least once or twice. So it's amazing how your group actually eggs you on to do other things that you didn't think you could ever do. So yeah, I think the support every day and seeing, learning from what the others are doing, actually, we all learn from each other's um, journey in the group. Mm. Um, whereas the coach sends you um, an inspirational message or a link to YouTube or an article to read, which obviously is great and helpful as well. So both, both help in different ways, but I, I do think the hero program is a win. Oh, that's cool. And you know what yeah i mean there's so many questions about the hero group but when, when it comes to the, the results part of it you know maybe not the results thing it's more like the willpower side of it like what do you think the difference is between going it alone and going it with a group for you what what has the difference been for you it's been the accountability so i mean you have you decide you're going to fast and then you get hungry at 12 o'clock and you go oh, well no one will know if i eat now and then you realize no actually i will tell them i, I can't eat now and you think oh, i don't have to tell them but you, you do tell them <laughs> so i just found that on each group so far we've all been so open and honest i mean you don't have to tell the people but you end up telling them so it's the accountability it's the checking in um and also it's being there to support the others when they have actually made a mistake or done, gone, something's gone wrong. And you actually all just chip in and go, no, it's okay, you know, keep going. So definitely the support and the accountability. That's awesome. And, and what are the benefits? So, you know, obviously everyone can see you lost 18 kilos. That's, that's remarkable. And then I think it was 21 or 20 centimeters off the waist, which is, you know, that you can see that that is like a, I mean, if, just if you imagine what 20 centimeters off the waist looks like, it's easier to imagine than losing 18 kilos, yeah. which is what everyone thinks they want. But what has that actually made available to you? You know, how has your life improved since you lost the weight? Um, I just, I can actually wake up in the morning not feeling tired, whereas before I would happily sleep till like 10, 11 o'clock on the weekends. Now I'm actually, I'm quite happy to get up, go for a walk, um my husband cycles and he normally cycles on a saturday morning and now some saturdays he doesn't and we actually go for a walk instead so being able to get out and go and do things like that whereas before i just i didn't have the energy i wasn't interested i didn't feel like walking i just wanted to stay at home 
Um, I also do an outing group with my class once a month, and most of it actually involves a hike. And as much as I enjoy it once I'm there, it was a dread every single month. I was like, oh, we've got to go do that hike. I don't want to do the hike. Um, yeah, and now it's like, oh, yeah, we're going, you know, it's, it's our outing group today. Off we go. And I used to dread it, whereas now I'm actually looking forward to it. So being fitter, being, you know, actually wanting to do a bit of exercise because before I didn't, I just wanted to sit and do nothing. So mm. I feel healthier, my pain is gone, my feet don't hurt, you know, it's just, it's just been totally different. <laughs> and, and how would you say it's affected your work performance? Um, I've got more energy. I mean, I work with teenagers, so you don't want to be tired and sluggish when you're working with a bunch of teenagers. You need energy, you need to keep up. Um, so, yeah, I definitely have more energy. Um, I feel more alive, more awake, <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's great. And and has it had any impact on the sleep? Um, I've always been a bad sleeper. Even since mm. I was a baby, my dad actually said I used to lie there and I'd be drifting off to sleep. And he said I used to, like, shake my head and wake myself up. So I've always been a bad sleeper. Um, I'm still struggling with my sleep, but I definitely am sleeping better. But mm. um, yeah, I, sleep's never been my friend. I can stay awake till two o'clock in the morning without a problem. Um, whereas now I'm actually making a conscious effort of actually going to bed at a decent time so that I can actually get in the hours. Otherwise I'll, you know, lie awake till who knows what time or be busy. I find things to do. <laughs> But my boys are the same, so we all like cruising around the house at 12 o'clock if nobody said, hey, go to bed. <laughs> really? Yeah. Night off. Yeah. And how, how would you say the this has changed your relationship with food? Yeah. Um, the Friday workshops have helped me with my food, uh, my relationship with food. I, I always looked at food as, you know, it's the enemy. It's. You mustn't eat a lot, you would eat little. Whereas I've actually learned now that that's not what food is. Food is allowed to be delicious. Food's allowed to be something you can have and you can eat a steak, it's actually okay. Um, and then also I've learned that I don't have to go and eat a whole slab of chocolate if I'm peeling down or, I've, or I'm angry. I actually question myself, okay, so you're angry, you're upset, but what's the food gonna do? It's not gonna help you. Um, it's actually just gonna make you feel worse. So. It's taught me to question what I'm doing and what I'm eating and why I'm eating it. Um, yeah, it's been quite an eye opener.
Okay, everyone, we lost internet because Cape Town lost its internet. I apologize. We will have to get Janine back on at a later stage to talk to us about the rest of her transformation. But for those of you who, who did tune in, did watch, thank you so much. And if you'd like to know anything more, uh, check out our website, realmealrevolution.com. Otherwise, have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye.